Hello and welcome to this new lecture. Now we'll derive an expression for the indicated mean effective pressure for an auto cycle. So from the definition, the indicated mean effective pressure or the IMEP is equal to the indicated work W cycle divided by the displacement volume for one cylinder. So from the previous uh, video, we have said that the indicated thermal efficiency eta is equal to W cycle divided by the heat input Qn. So now we can say that W cycle is simply eta multiplied by Qn. And from the definition of the compression ratio R, which is equal to the maximum volume, which is V1 divided by the minimum volume, which is V2. And we can say that the maximum volume V1 is equal to V2 plus the displacement volume measured from the top that center to the bottom that center. So V1 is equal to V2 plus the displacement volume of course for one cylinder divided by V2. So now the displacement volume for one cylinder will be equal to V2 into R minus 1 and we can replace V2 from using this equation by V1 divided by R. So this will be equal to V1 into R minus 1 divided by R. So now the IMEP will be equal to eta Qn divided by the displacement volume, which is V1 multiplied by R minus 1 divided by R. So we can write it as R divided by R minus 1. So this is the expression for the indicated mean effective pressure. However, we can write the IMEP in dimensionless form by dividing the IMEP by the pressure at state 1, which is P1. So in dimensionless form, IMEP divided by P1 will be equal to eta Qn over P1 V1 into R over R minus 1. So this term here, Qn divided by P1 V1, is called the dimensionless heat input. So Qn divided by P1 V1 is called the dimensionless heat So as you can see that the dimensionless IMEP is function of the dimensionless heat input and the compression ratio R. Uh, of course, here the indicated thermal efficiency is function of the compression ratio R. So we can say that IMEP divided by P1 is only function of the dimensionless heat input and the compression ratio R. So IMEP over P1 is a function of the dimensionless heat input Qn over P1 V1 and the compression ratio. Now let's go to Excel and plot this equation to see the variation of the dimensionless indicated mean effective pressure with respect to the dimensionless heat input and the compression ratio. So open the file called autocycleimep.xlsx provided under the exercise files of this course. So now we will calculate the dimensionless IMEP for several values of dimensionless heat input for values equal to 10, 20, 30, and 40. And to see the effect of variation of compression ratio, we will vary R from 2 to 10. So to calculate IMEP divided by P1 for a dimensionless heat input equal to 10, select cell C5, tuck in the equal sign, then select cell B5, which is eta, multiplied by a Qn divided by P1 V1 equal to 10. So select cell C2 and press the F4 key to use an absolute cell reference. So we don't want the cell address to change when we use the autofill. Then multiplied by R, select cell A5 divided by R minus 1. Then close the parenthesis and hit Ctrl Enter to stay on the same cell. So double click the autofill handle to autofill. Now we will repeat the calculation for a dimensionless heat input equal to 20. 
So select cell D5, type in the equal sign. So eta multiplied by cell D2. Press F4 to use an absolute cell reference. Multiplied by R, A5 divided by A5 minus 1. Close the parenthesis, control enter, then double click to autofill. Repeat for a dimensional seed input equal to 30. So select cell E5 equal to eta multiplied by E2. Press F4, then multiplied by A5 divided by A5 minus 1. Close the parenthesis, hit Ctrl Enter, then double click to autofill. Then for a dimensional seed input equal to 40, select cell F5 equal to eta multiplied by F2. Press F4 to use absolute cell reference. Then multiplied by R divided by R minus 1. Then close the parenthesis, hit Ctrl Enter, and double click to autofill. So let's plot the variation of IMAP with respect to R and with respect to the dimensionless heat input. So select the cells from A4 to A13. Then hold on the control key to add to the selection and select from C4 to F13. Go to the insert tab to the chart section, click on insert scatter, then choose the scatter with the smooth lines and markers. So select the chart title here and press delete to delete and drag uh, this little dot on the corner to enlarge the chart area. Let's add access titles. So for this, I click on this plus button, check access titles, then change uh, the Y axis title name to IMEP divided by P1 and hit enter. Then the X axis title to compression ratio r then hit enter so here we have the variation of the dimensionless imp with respect to increasing compression ratio and every curve corresponds to a dimensionless heat input so the first curve corresponds to a dimensionless heat input equal to 10 the red one corresponds to 20 the gray one to 30 and the yellow one to 40. so we can change uh, the legend names so Go to the design tab under the data section, click on select data. And with the first series selected, click on edit and change the series name to QN divided by P1 V1 equal to 10, hit enter. Then select the second series. So this, is, uh, this corresponds to QN divided by P1 V1 equal to 20, hit enter. The third one, QN divided by P1, V1 equal to 30. And the last one, we have QN divided by P1, V1 equal to 40. Then hit OK, then OK. So if we want to analyze this graph, you can see that the dimensionless IMAP will increase linearly with increasing dimensionless heat input. However, it will increase to a lesser degree with increasing compression ratio. So the increase with respect to dimensionless heat input is much more important when compared to the increase with respect to compression ratio. So now we have a good theoretical background concerning autocycle. In the next videos, we will solve some problems in order to practice how we can analyze autocycles. So see you in the next videos.